now have a look at some harder examples of solving equations. So the same key points that we needed before still apply. So when we have a question that's asking us to solve for x, our aim is to get x on its own on one side of the equal sign. So we get x equals something. And if we do something to one side, we have to do it to the other side. But this time with these harder questions, we have a couple more points that I think will be useful. So it can make things easier if there are fractions or brackets in the question to get rid of the fractions and then get rid of the brackets before you do anything else. Another key point is if you have x squared mentioned in the question instead of just x, you can rearrange to get x squared equals something instead and then you take the square root and you'll get x equals plus or minus something. Let's have a look at how that works now. So I have a question here. So it says, question one, solve for x, x squared plus five equals 30. So let me write down the question first. So we have x squared plus five equals 30. So you'll notice here we have an x squared instead of just an x. So our key point four applies. We now want to rearrange this to get x squared equals something. So if we wanna get x squared on its own, um, on this left-hand side, you can see we kinda wanna get rid of that plus five. So to get rid of the plus five, we're going to need to minus five from the left hand side. So we want to minus five here. And so if we do it on the left hand side, we have to do it on the right hand side too. X squared plus five minus five. So we're just going to get X squared on the left hand side. 30 minus five is going to go to 25. So now we have X squared equals 25. Now following point four. Now we've got x squared equals 25. In order to just get x equals, to undo the squared, we're gonna to need to take the square root of the left-hand side. On this side, we want to square root, and so we're gonna to have to square root on this side also. So on the left-hand side, we're just gonna get x. If you square root the squared sign, you're just gonna get x. And then you're gonna get on the right-hand side, the square root of 25 is five. But you have to be really careful here because whenever you square root when solving an equation like this, you need to put plus or minus before the number. This is because both five squared and minus five squared are 25. So it's really important if you have x squared equal something and you take the square roots, you'll end up with two answers. You'll have x equals plus five or x equals minus five. So this is the answer, but you can also write it as x equals five or x equals minus five. So you can write it like this or you can write x equals 5 or x equals minus 5, this whole sentence here, to show that you know that there are two answers. And so what I love about these solving for x questions is you can check that you've got the right answer. If you substitute, let's try our first answer here, x equals 5 in here. So on the left hand side up there, you've got x squared plus 5 equals, so here we've got x is 5, so we've got 5 squared plus 5 which is 25 plus five, which is 30. And, ah, and that is exactly what we wanted. So we know five is a correct answer. And also now let's try this one here. If you put, so for the left-hand side up here, x squared plus five, if we substitute in this minus five, we've got minus five squared plus five. So minus five times minus five, the minuses cancel. So again, we get 25 plus five and that equals 30. So you can see both of these answers are correct. Both of these satisfy this. So that is our answer. Let's try another question. So here we have solve for x, 3x squared plus 3 equals 15. Okay, so again, we have an x squared, not an x. So we want the x squared on its own. So we want to keep all the x squareds on one side and all the numbers on another side. So let's keep all the x squareds on this left hand side. So we want to get rid of this three. So all the numbers are just on the right hand side. So to get rid of the three from this side, we're gonna to want to minus three here. If we minus three on this left hand side, we're gonna to have to minus it over here as well. So you'll end up with say three x squared plus three minus three just goes to three x squared because we're getting rid of that three. And 15 minus three gives us 12. So with minus three on both sides, so we've almost got x squared on its own, but we've got three times x squared. So we wanna get rid of that three in front of the x squared. So to reverse times, we need to divide. So if we divide the left-hand side by three, so also divide it by three over here, three x squared divided by three gets us our x squared that we wanted on its own. And 12 divided by three, that's four. So we have x squared equals four. Now we want to end up with x equals something. So in order to get the x equals from the squared, 
we're going to want to square root this left hand side. Let's square root over here, so we need to square root on both. Then on the left hand side we're undoing this squared by square rooting, so we get x. And then the square root of 4 is 2, because 2 squared is 4, but you need to be careful here because again we need our plus or minus. So as soon as you've done a square root sign here, just saying okay we need to put plus or minus in front of the number because also minus 2 squared is 4, and lots of people forget that. So again, this is our answer, which stands for two separate answers here. This is saying you can have x equals 2 or x equals minus 2. So you need to be clear that there are two answers when you write down your solution. And again, if you like, you can check by substituting in 2 here, and indeed 3 times 2 squared, which is 12, plus 3 is indeed 15, and the same goes if you replace the 2 with the minus 2. So both of these answers work. Let's try another question. So here we have solve for x, 9x equals 3 times x plus 4. Okay, so we don't have an x squared, we're back to our usual x scenario, um, but we do have brackets. So we want to look at our key point 3 that tells us to get rid of fractions and brackets first. There are no fractions, just brackets, so let's get rid of them. Um, when I say get rid of, I mean expand. So Let's expand the brackets on the right hand side. So to expand this, you can do, we've got three times x and three times four. So three times x is three x, and then three times plus four is plus 12. So we're expanding the brackets. Okay, so now we want to do our usual tactic of getting all the x's on one side and the numbers on the other side. So let's get the x's on this left hand side. So we want to get rid of the x's on the right hand side. So to get rid of this 3x, we can minus the 3x from this side. So if we minus the 3x here, and so we also do it over here, we're going to have 9x minus 3x equals 3x minus 3x, they just cancel to 0, so that equals 12. And we can simplify this because you can combine terms that both have an x in. So 9x minus 3x is 6x equals 12. Okay, and now we want to get x equals something without the 6 in front of it. So because this is 6 times x, to get rid of the 6, we're going to want to divide by 6. So left hand side, 6x divided by 6 is just x, 12 divided by 6 is 2, so the answer is 2. And again, as always, I really recommend checking this by substituting in 2 on both sides of this and making sure they're equal. Let's try another question. So this question says, solve for y, 6 times y plus 1 equals 18. Don't be put off by the fact there's a y instead of an x, it's just exactly the same thing. We just want to end up with y equals something instead of x equals something. Okay, so again there are brackets, so it falls into our key point 3, get rid of our brackets first. So let's expand the brackets. So here, 6 times y is 6y, 6, 6 times plus 1 is plus 6, so we're expanding like this that equals 18. So now we want to collect the y terms on one side, numbers on the other. So if we collect the y terms over here and the numbers over here, this plus 6 we don't want on this side. So in order to get rid of the plus 6 here, we're going to want to minus 6. So let's minus 6 here, so we need to do that over here too. 6y plus 6 minus the 6 just goes to 6y, so we're getting rid of that 6. 18 minus 6 is 12. And we're almost done. We now want y equals something on its own. So to get rid of the 6, we're going to have to divide by 6 over here. And so we do it over here as well. 6y divided by 6 is just y, which is what we wanted. And 12 divided by 6 is 2. So the answer is y equals 2. And again, we can check that really quickly. y plus 1, so 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 times 6 is 18, so we're good. Okay, question 5. Solve for x, so we've got 4x minus 2 all divided by 5 equals minus 2. Okay, so we've got a fraction here. Point 3 says get rid of fractions first. So we want to get rid of this fraction on the left hand side. So we want to get rid of that divided by 5 section. Now the reverse of dividing is multiplying. So if we multiplied this left hand side by 5, that divided by 5 would disappear. So we want to multiply this side by 5. So we're going to have to multiply this one by 5 as well. This side times by 5 is just going to be 4x minus 2 because we're literally just cancelling out that division by 5 by multiplying it by 5. And then on this side, minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. 
Now we want to collect x's over here, numbers over here. So we want to get rid of that minus t. So to get rid of minus t, we want a plus t on both sides. So this side just becomes 4x. This side is minus 10 plus 2, which is going to be minus 8. Now to get the x on its own, we've currently got 4 times x. So we want to divide that 4. We're going to divide by 4. So we need to do that over here. So we're going to get x on its own. 4x divided by 4 is x. Minus 8 divided by 4 is minus 2. And that is our answer. Let's try another one. So this is question 6. We've got solve for x, 2 equals 2x squared plus 4 all divided by 11. So again, we see this and we think, okay, we've got a fraction. So key point three, get rid of fractions. So in order to get rid of this divided by 11 section, we want to times that side by 11. On this right hand side, by timesing this by 11, you cancel out the division by 11. So this is just going to be 2x squared plus 4. And on this left hand side, We've got 2 times 11 is 22. Another key thing to notice is that we've got an x squared here, not x. So that's where we use key point 4. So we want to get x squared on its own on one of the sides. So the x squared is actually on the right hand side this time. So why don't we collect the x squareds over here and put the numbers over here for a change. We've got 2x squared over here, that's good. But we want to get rid of the 4 from this side because we're trying to put the numbers on this side. So to get rid of plus 4, we need to minus 4 from the side. So be minus 4 over here and say so minus 4 2 here 22 minus 4 is going to be 18 and then this side is just going to be 2x squared because we've minus that 4 okay so we've almost got x squared equals something but here we've got a 2 times x squared so we want to divide by that 2 to get x squared on its own so if we divide by 2 here and also here we get 9 equals x squared and just to make it clearer, I'm just going to swap over the two sides. So it's fine to do this. If there's an equal sign in the middle, you can swap over this. We're saying here 9 equals x squared. That's the same as saying x squared equals 9. There's no problem with doing that. So let's just do that so it's in a more familiar format. Now we just want to get x on its own. So to undo the squared, we need to square root. So let's square root both sides. So this side is going to be x and then Square root of 9 is 3, but we've got to be careful because it's actually plus or minus 3. And so this is our answer. So again, there are two solutions, x equals plus 3 or x equals minus 3. Both work in here. And so you need to be really clear that you're saying that there are two solutions, plus 3 and minus 3. Okay, final question. So this one looks quite a lot more scary, but I don't think it's too bad. I think we have all the tools to solve it. So I'm just going to write it out as usual. Okay, so in this case, we have both fractions and brackets. So first get rid of fractions and then get rid of the brackets. So let's focus on this fraction. So this fraction has something all divided by three. So to undo the division by three, we're gonna to want to multiply that by three. So if we multiply this by three, we're gonna to have to multiply all of this side by three and also this side by three. So we're gonna times everything on this side by three. So this term here, the 2 times x plus 2 divided by 3, if you times that by 3, you just get the, the thing on the top, the 2 times x plus 2, and because the times 3 just cancels out that division. 4 times 3 is going to be 12, so we've got plus 12, so that's this side times by 3. This side times by 3, I'm just going to write it as 3 times, so if we do 3 times the fraction, it's going to be 3 times the thing on the top over 2. So that is three times this side. Okay, so we've got rid of one of the fractions. Let's get rid of this one. So in order to cancel out division by two, we want to times this side by two. So we're also going to have to times this side by two. So on this side, if we times this by two, we're going to have two times two times x plus two. So I'm just going to write that as four times x plus two. Hopefully you can see that that is two times this. And then 2 times 12 is 24. And then this side times by 2. The, the times by 2 cancels out that division. So we get 3 times x plus 1 on that side. Okay, we've got rid of the fractions. That's a really good first step. Now we want to get rid of the brackets. Let's expand this side. So 4 times this, we're going to get 4x plus 8. So that's doing 4 times x and 4 times 2 plus 24. That equals over here, we get 3 times x 
and then plus three. Okay, that looks a lot better than this. This is a format we're much happier with. First thing I see here is that the eight and the 24, these are numbers on the same side, so we can just combine those. So let's just rewrite that. So four X plus eight plus 24 is 32 equals three X plus three. Now let's collect all the X's on one of the sides. So let's choose this left-hand side. So we want to get rid of the x over here. So to do that, we want to minus that 3x on both sides. So over here, we're going to get the 4x plus 32 minus 3x equals the 3x we minus away. So we just get 3 over here. We can combine this 4x and the minus 3x because they're both x terms. So that gives us x plus 32 equals 3. And hopefully you can see from here, we want to put the numbers on this side. So in order to get rid of the number here, we want to minus 32. We're going to get on the left hand side, we get X. And on the right hand side, we have 3 minus 32, which I think is minus 29. Yeah, so again, we've got this answer. We've got it in the right format, X equals something. So that is our solution. And as always, you can check it in there. If you have a calculator in an exam, you can just whack it in the calculator and see if when you put x equals minus 29 into the left hand side, you get the same answer as if you put it into the right hand side. So now you know how to solve equations when there are fractions, brackets, and if you have a squared sign in them as well. Thanks for watching. Here's another video I think you'll like. Here's another video YouTube thinks you'll like. I have no idea what it is. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. Who knows? If you like this video and want to see more aesthetic messy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe!